Metro Manila is one of the worst cities to live in. If you're a commuter, minsan alas 9 na wala ka pa rin masakyan. It's already 9 in the evening and you have no ride. You can't afford ride-sharing services because you're a minimum wage earner. So you have no choice but to walk home and arrive at 1 a.m. in the morning, only to be up four hours later and repeat the same cycle. If you're a cyclist, you probably already have life and death experiences kung saan nakipagsapalan ka sa mga truck at mga mabibilis at sigang sasakyan. Right? And if you're a public transport worker, jeepney drivers, truck drivers, bus drivers, tricycle drivers, you've probably already suffered from the inhumane boundary system in this country. There are days when you go home after hours of hard labor with nothing to bring to your family. There's also a high chance that you have a developing ulcer. Kasi, oras na ng pagkain is already what? Lunchtime, dinner time, pero nakaipit ka pa rin sa traffic. You're still stuck in traffic. And if you're a car owner, yes, you do have the comfort that the other three sectors I mentioned do not have. But you're still stuck in traffic for four hours every day. And if you're middle class, chances are you probably got your car on loan. So you have to budget high maintenance expenses, high gasoline expenses, and at the same time, loan payments plus interest. Yes, you do have the car and the comfort of a car, but you're still stuck in traffic every day and you're broke. And I hate it. I really, really, really do. Sobra. Actually, galit ako. At may karapatan akong magalit. Because my family has been a victim of this inhumane and oppressive system. Of this mobility crisis. At pagod na ako. I grew up as part of the jeepney community. And this system rob my sector of a dignified life. This conversation is about the mobility crisis in this country. But I will give a little bit of space for the narratives of our transport workers and their experience on the ground. Because they deserve din lang bakinggan. They are the ones who are forced to participate in the system that robs them and removes their dignity from them. Jeepney drivers, like my father, are actually one of the most hardworking sectors in our country. Naaalala ko, I really remember seeing him at home. You see, my father wakes up at 3 a.m. in the morning just so he can ply the roads at 4 a.m. Bakit 4 a.m.? Kasi may mga commuters na 4 a.m. pa lang, nasa kalsada na para makaiwas ng traffic, and just so they can arrive on their workplaces 4 hours later pretty undignified, right? So he, he, he rides and plies the rules at 4 a.m. And then by lunchtime, that's already around 8 hours of labor, he only has enough to pay the boundary fee, or in layman's terms, to break even. If he goes home at 12 noon, he will have nothing to bring home to his family. But my father supports a family of four. So he works until midnight, sometimes until 1 in the morning, just to make ends meet, especially when we have due payments. That's what, another 12, 13 hours of labor. In total, he probably worked every day for 20 to 21 hours. Just to bring home 800 pesos, or $16 every day. That's barely a dollar per hour and way less than the minimum per hour wage even in a poor country like the Philippines. I hate seeing his tired face. He shouldn't have to be exhausted all the time. But what I hated more was hearing him apologize for not being enough of a father to provide for our needs. Our transport workers, jeepney drivers like my father, have nothing to apologize for. Their poverty is not their fault. And I will condemn the system. I condemn the system that makes them believe otherwise. Our transport system is inhumane 
pre-pandemic. Not only to its workers like my father, but to everyone. Then the pandemic happened. The government suspended public transportation. And then, suddenly, everything was worse. This is Nanay Loida. She needs regular dialysis, but they can't afford to rent a van worth, what, 3,000, 5,000 pesos? There also isn't public transport available. In fact, Nanay Loida, hindi niya nga pagmamayari yung wheelchair na gamit niya. Hinaram lang po niya. They have to wake up early in the morning, and then si tatay, pupush niyo po si nanay from Batasan Hills to Fairview, that's around 6 kilometers, so that she can reach her dialysis center on time. And para din maibalik yung wheelchair na hinaram niya, so that they can return the wheelchair. Now, imagine, how many nanay loidas in the Philippines are asked to climb overpasses just so they can cross the roads. Can she climb? Can her husband, who by the way is also a senior citizen, push her up our steep overpasses? No. But she has another choice. She can try the sidewalks. But our sidewalks are blocked because Yay! Car parkings! Sad. So, there really isn't any other choice. Her husband pushes the wheelchair on our roads and just pray that speeding vehicles and huge trucks don't accidentally kill them. But the chances are unlikely. In fact, I want you guys to meet Renz. Si Renz Perez po ay isang nurse mula ang nagkatrabaho sa Manila at mula sa hometown ko, kababayan ko po siya in Albay. We pass by his house every day in fact when we're about to go to Centro and do our weekly errands. Renz died. Actually, no. Renz was killed. He was cycling home from work after long hours shift of saving lives. He was hit and dragged on our roads. It is almost a year since he passed away, but his father still visits his grave every day. Araw-araw pa rin pong pumupunta ng puntod niya ang tatay niya. They were really close. We also have our siblings with disabilities. Five of them wheelchair their way from Pangasinan to Kainta, that's around 200 kilometers, because there are no provincial buses that can take them home. But our roads have no trees. Our roads have no shades. Talagang asfalto lang at cement. Asphalt and cement. They endure that for days, only with little backpack, little food, and a bottle of water. And let's not forget... Our millions of workers who lose their livelihood every day, hindi lang in the transport sector, our jeepney drivers, bus drivers, tricycle drivers, who don't have passengers anymore and who are banned from making a dignified livelihood. But also our workers who are outside the transport sector, who were fired because they couldn't report to work on site. Our construction workers, our security guards, our sanitary personnel, among others, don't have the privilege of work from home. And some employers, um, sadly, don't seem to understand that their minimum wage employees cannot afford cars or cannot afford ride-sharing services. Clearly, the pandemic worsened our already alarming mobility crisis, but it also showed us a way out. For the longest time, we were blaming public transport for the clogging in our streets. But the public transportation ban in March 2020 did not eradicate traffic. Traffic pa rin. Punong puno pa rin po ang mga kalsada. When we were limited to essential travel, car owners weren't the ones that lined up in wet markets and grocery stores, but commuters and pedestrians. When we were limited to skeletal workforce, 
cyclists, commuters, and pedestrians were the ones on our streets. Because our construction workers, our frontliners, and other essential workers do not have cars and showed us exactly why our response pre-pandemic did not work. 88 of our population cannot afford cars, but our roads and our transport policies are designed for the 12% who can. The solution is clear and loud. To solve this mobility crisis, we must flip the coin and undo generations of car-centric policies. Three ways. First, we're talking about prioritizing pedestrians, especially our most vulnerable load users like Nanay Loida, like pregnant women, senior citizens, and our siblings with disability. Abolish overpasses and let people walk on ground level sidewalks and pedestrian lanes. Penalize establishments and car owners who use sidewalks for car parkings. Lower speed limits on our roads such that, such that it's safe even for children to cross. Yes po, mga bata. Because a safe road is a road where you can entrust your children to cross without being forced to think about their burial. Pagod na po ako makipagpatentero sa mga kotse. I'm done playing patentero with our cars. We need to prioritize our pedestrians and not vehicles. Second, make our cities bike-friendly. Convert car lanes and car parkings to bike lanes and bike parkings. Sobrang laki pong espasyo ang masasave natin, to be honest. Because Metro Manila is such a small city. It's actually a very bikeable city. That's why for a city this small, for, for like a region, NCR, this small, five hours of travel is insane and unreasonable. Build the infrastructure, make it safe, and people will bike. Our roads will decongest. Last, thirdly, invest in public transport. To be honest, a lot of car owners I know own cars because commuting is undignified and unsafe. Hindi po car owners ang kalaban natin dito. In fact, the state wants us to shift to modern jeepneys, but we don't have allocation in our national budget for funding the support of this shift. Our jeepney drivers, for example, cannot afford 2 million pesos. That's roughly around $40,000 if they actually barely have enough savings and isang taon silang walang trabaho. Our transport workers also want dignified commuting kasi karamihan sa kanila commuters din. At they also want environmentally compliant vehicles because they're the ones who are actually consuming all the fumes every day for long hours. They don't want that pollution anymore. They want environmentally compliant vehicles too. But, gusto po nila, they also want a just transition. Isa pong transition na makatarungan. They run our roads. They're the ones mobilizing the economy. Not actually our CEOs. It's our transport workers. Wag natin silang iwan as we chase progress. And to be frank, this country has the resources and the money to make this happen. We ran the computations. We spent trillions of pesos for road construction and road widening. Redirect this fund for safe walking infrastructure, for bike lanes, for active, um, active transport, and for public transport. In fact, we only need 180 billion pesos, just a fraction of what we normally spend. This is also a reminder that space is a finite resource. The more space you convert into highways, the less we have for housing, for parks, for libraries, and for everything else. And the Philippines is a rapidly growing population. Friends, we don't need more highways. We have enough of them. We have enough roads. What we need is to make our roads efficient. The answer is not to widen them and take up space. The answer is to decongest them. Again, 
three steps. Encourage people to walk. Encourage people to bike, especially for short trips. And lessen cars by investing in public transport. We consistently rank in the world's worst traffic because our roads are congested. Our roads are congested because only 12% of people can afford cars, yet they occupy 70% of our road space. Yes, 70%. And this is the great inequality of our roads. Therefore, to decongest our roads, let the majority of the population access majority of the road space. It's not rocket science. It's not hard to think about. But no one sector can do this. Government, civil society, and private sector need to work together to make this happen. And we are starting. I want a country not where the poor own cars, but where even the rich walk, bike, and ride public transport. I want a country where people like Nana Loida can easily access her dialysis centers because our roads are inclusive. I want a country where people like Renz can bike safely to and from work because our roads are so safe that even children can use them. I want a country where commuters can easily reach their home and workplaces because public, transport, public transportation is adequate and services are reliable. I want a country where the livelihood of transport workers like my father are treated with dignity and with social security where he can work just for eight hours and bring home income for his family. More than enough. Hindi yung lagi siyang nagmamakaawa. Hindi yung lagi siyang nagsusori. They deserve more than this. Ang ganda, no? And we can still do it. But we are racing against time. There is rapid urbanization in the Philippines and it's likely irreversible. Right now, a 10-minute trip takes like 3 hours because of congestion. It's bad, but we can still move. If we don't start prioritizing people and if we continue our car-centric response to the mobility crisis, we will reach a state where we may never move at all. We will have cities on complete standstill. We will likely stop going out and just live in the cages of our homes. No more face-to-face -face interactions, classes, work, and even essential trips to the grocery stores. Wala na. A city on a standstill. A city with no mobility at all. I don't want to live in a cage. Do you?